Man, still watching that video always gets me pumped. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another special episode of Death Taxes and Sports, episode 91. We are bringing you the state of New York sports. I'm here with my good friend, E-Man, from Average Joe Sports Talk. Sir, how are you doing today? Absolutely magnificent. I concur with you 100%. You watched that intro, nothing but hypeness, man. You got some uh, stuff that really fired my blood up, and I'm ready, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No doubt, no doubt. As we're talking before the show, Gary Johnson, our other co-host, will be coming on here in a second. He'll be waking up from his nap. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but like I was saying on the episode prior to starting, we were talking in the studio in the green room, the virtual green room. We did uh, a state of Arizona sports, and I was like, let's keep the conversation going. We'll recover all the different major markets, as well as the state of all the different sports. And I was like, New York. And I was like, I got to bring... The New York legend himself, E-Man, and then Gary also being in New York, and we got to get this conversation going. But, sir, how are things going with your show, man? What you got What you got cooking? Good, man. You know, the NBA final just kind of, you know, finished, and that's where a lot of the bulk happens. I was time to really get involved into baseball and uh, other stuff around. So, uh, you know, I did my – I like to do my instant reactions right after the NBA finals each game. That was my last episode. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a break from my weekly live, but – uh, we just got to keep it moving, man. You know, uh, trying to see if I get some guests. I want to definitely have you on so we could uh, talk some uh, sports also as well. And uh, this summer is more about now getting ready for football and uh, diving into baseball and anything else that pops up trending. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So question, did 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 the Nuggets, did the Nuggets, oh, Gary Legend, sir, how you doing? Gentlemen, how are you? How you doing, Gary? Good, good, good. 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 Awesome. Um, but before we get to the New York, like, what were your thoughts in the finals real quick, you man? Just kind of curious your thoughts, buddy. You know, it's funny. Remember, I was here about right before the playoffs started, join you guys. And we all were talking about how none of us believed in the Nuggets, you know, the Grizzlies right. and stuff like that. And you know what? I guess we were wrong, right? But I got a, I got a reason why we, we did not trust the Nuggets, right? Because if you think about it, right, the only people that trusted the Nuggets were the local market area fans that saw this team play every single day. As you saw him play them, how many times have you watch him play on TNT or ESPN throughout the whole year in Thursday night or Wednesday bas night basketball? Never. You saw him, I think I saw him like once or twice, and I probably turned off the TV, right? Uh, right. This watching him in the playoffs, you got to see what the that part of the country saw in that team. Pretty damn good basketball team. Yeah. Jokic and Murray are, are two ballers, you know? Yeah. And, uh, props yeah, man. Are, props yeah. are due, man. You got to get props. Oh, yeah. Props are due. No doubt, no doubt. I know Gary, you and I, and we talked about it in the last episode, we'll be talking about it. Like, I think it's safe to say that they surprised a lot of people because you were wondering, when are the Nuggets going to be the Nuggets? Because they haven't really given us a lot of confidence that they were going to be able to show up in crunch time. And I think they surprised everybody, Gary. Absolutely. You know, but with them, it's a lot of like, if not now, when? Because let's be honest, you know, a lot of us haven't seen it, but they weren't the number one seed in the West by accident. Like they, they've been in that spot or near that spot for the last four years. And they've been slowly building this. We talked about it before, Jeff. Um, you know, they were in the bubble. They got to the conference finals, but they weren't ready yet. Jokic was still, he was on the way, but he wasn't where he needed to be. Then he gets to where he needs to be. He loses Jamal Murray. Mm -hmm. And also he did have Michael Porter Jr. in 2020 mm -hmm. at that point. So and then he loses Jamal Murray, but gets Porter Jr. back. So they're still like not there yet. And we said, let them have a healthy roster. Watch what happens. Well, you know, it could yeah. happen. This, this yeah. is really what we said was going to happen. It, even I almost feel like everything went right for them because everyone was healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we don't see that. Like, it's just everything went right for them and they won at the key moments. You, you don't see that too often. Yeah. But, it's like anything with sports, right? Uh, the team, they like, and and to echo on Gary's point, they added the pieces, the p pieces to this team from the bubble. You know, the bubble, they, I think they won one game. Or I don't know they got swept by the Lakers. That's so long ago, I forgot. Uh, okay. And um, regardless of that, every year, you know, they lost Jamal, but every year they kept improving, regardless of the Jamal's injury. When Jamal comes back, you notice that they added Aaron Gordon this year, KCP. I mean, these are all role players that you're surrounding against your two superstars. Everybody knew that the two cornerstones is it's Jokic and Jamal. And again, you know, the, the drafting of Michael oh, MPJ, Michael Porter Jr. He, it was great. So they just keep adding all these pieces. Bruce Brown. I mean, when you look at a team, one of the things I said in my first preview episode, not to keep running this long, it's like, it's going to be the team, right? The, the superstars, of course, step up like any NBA finals, right? However, whichever supporting cast, role players have the better series is going to be the team that's going to win. 
and everybody for for the Nuggets. You know, Aaron Gordon had a insane series. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they were no just doubt. a better prepared team. They had the more talented. They had the better pieces, supporting cast, and the two better superstars. No doubt. It was a good run. Good run. So, as we get to this New York, I want to throw each of you a question. I what? want you to picture that you are the governor of New York sports, if there was such a thing. And each year, you have to give the State of the Union on the state of the sports. In one word, the state of New York sports is blank. E-Man, you first, and go to Gary. What is one word? Uh, unachieving, I guess. <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah. I'm curious. Why, 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 why unachieving? Yankees always have a loaded roster. So with the Mets, we fall short every year, right? Uh, again, the Knicks, every year we, we're doing better, right? But again, it's you look at that team, and every time you, you go a step forward, I don't know what, next season we go two steps backwards. I don't know what's going to happen this season. I'm hoping that is the opposite, right? Uh, Rangers were supposed to, and I don't do hockey at all, but they were supposed to be the team this year. Got kicked out when they shouldn't. Giants are, again, looking up, but I don't think we did enough to improve over the season. So we're kind of unachieving, right? Uh, okay. The Jets, they're like the Mets, all right? We're going we're gonna to have all the bells and whistles, but probably gonna, they're going to self-destruct throughout the season. So I guess it's a kind of achieving. We we go in hard and we 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 look good on paper, and then all of a sudden we just let our fans down. That's, that's okay. what I'm thinking. It's not like right. the good old days where the Yankees you knew they were going to win and they won. Right, right. And the Knicks is going to be in the conference finals. You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> back in the nineties. Okay, all right. I'm with that, Gary. State of New York sports is blank. You said one word, right? One it's word. hard, man. <laughs> Unknown. Okay. I mean, like, I'm, I'm <clears throat> there's a lot, like, Iman just said, like, there's cautious optimism when you look at the Knicks, for example. They took a step forward that they needed to. You look at the Yankees, you know, they've been there. Like, we as, as we're, we're spoiled New York sports fans, like, just as a whole, we're just genuinely spoiled, especially Yankee fans. Mm -hmm. We're spoiled brats. Let's be very clear about this. Like, we're over here pouting and kicking, you know, and being you no know, blase about the Yankees. Like, oh, they're not doing well. This is a team that, for the last thirty years, has produced a winning record. In the last five years, they've won at least ninety-five games. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, exclude twenty twenty from that. But like, this is a team that, in any other metric is as good as it gets in baseball. But there's no championship in 13 years. You got five and 30, right? In the previous uh, 17, right? And so it's yeah. like you expect it. <laughs> My childhood was nothing but it's Yankees awesome. World Series and ticker tape parades down the Canyon of Heroes. That's what I'm accustomed to. So to go this far and have to try to explain to my children that, yes, the Yankees once were champions, I didn't think I'd have to live to see this day so soon, but yet here I am, 35 years old, and trying to explain, yes, no, the Yankees are actually good, and, you know, it's it's just there's there's a roadblock in Houston for some reason. I don't know why. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I think – so I'm going to say, as a, and we'll talk about the Yankees, but I'll, I'll save my thoughts on that. If I have to give the state of the state or New York sports, holistically – Futuristic. Futuristic in the sense that you look at the New York Liberty, for instance, there's some optimism for the future, getting Brianna Stewart, Sabrina Nescu. There's there's futuristic optimism for the Rangers still. They just hired a new coach. The Yankees with Aaron Judge, as long as you have Aaron Judge, you have Garrett Cole, there's still going to be a promising future. The Mets, well... They're just going to keep spending money, and maybe they get it together. They're one and nine in their last ten games. I look at, we don't know what the future is going to hold for the Jets. Their future is going to be intriguing, and then you look at your Giants. Well, futuristic. That's what I'm saying. Futuristic. There's, there's some, there's, there's cautious optimism. Can we all just say there's cautious optimism absolutely. for the absolutely. state of new york sports absolutely you're absolutely right in that in that sense like 
you look across the board, there's now there's no longer this doom and gloom in every mm-hmm. single sport. Right. We're, we're looking at it and go, okay, there might be traction here. You know, I know we're going to talk about the Jets and everything that they did in this off season. And it's like, you know, this is the first time we're talking about the Jets and it not being, yeah, the, the punchline. Right. Yeah. Like, right. There, right. there is a possibility of actual postseason football for Gang Green. Like, there's. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, the soccer team just won a championship. Right. You know, you know like, <clears throat> now it's obviously a growing sport, but in the hierarchy of where of New York, yeah. it's like, yes, I know that they won. It, they just won the championship. It's like, I know about it because it happened to be on the cover of the Daily News the day I happened to look at it at the newsstand <laughs> as I was walking by. That, no, he's, no, not, he's not wrong. <laughs> no disrespect. I have no, no, no respect for soccer players. Like that's no. one sport that I would never play, but I've always been a fan of. But when you look at as a New Yorker, you know what it is. It, it's depending on the border: basketball, football, baseball, hockey. Mm-hmm. That's, that's it. it. That's but New, but Eman, New York is a sports town. I'm just saying across the board. If you put it on on a piece of paper and you put up all the teams. There's not one single team that doesn't have some type of direction or some type of path for the future. Like every mm-hmm. single team. And yeah. I think this is the first time and just there's there's some type of direction. Now, whether if it's going to be championships, the Giants are not a laughing stock based on what they nope. did last year. The Jets aren't going to be a laughing stock because they have Aaron Rodgers. Now, whether they make it to the playoffs, we'll see. But Amen. First team, New York Knicks. All right, let's talk some what, Knicks basketball. What is the state of the New York Knicks specifically? Look, uh, Knicks had probably their second best season, what, in the last 10 years? The last time we made it to the second round was the Mellow Knicks. Uh, Listen, this was their best season in, in 20 years. <laughs> no, say 23 years. Yeah. Since 99, when we made it to the uh, NBA Finals, right, as the eighth seed, the same thing Miami just did. And, you know, ironically, we lost to probably one of the greatest centers in the game or power forwards and Tim Duncan as a rookie. You know, so it's like uh, going back that far. Uh, look, great, great year. You know, we made it to the second round. We beat a pretty darn good Cleveland Cavaliers team. Uh, Jalen Brunson, which I'm one of the first to admit it, I was wrong about the guy. I thought we overpaid for a uh, backup point guard. You know what? Hey, that's why I don't get paid for this, right? This dude came out here, and I knew he was a good player in Dallas because you saw a lot of Dallas in the playoffs, right? You saw him what he did in the second unit. You saw it when Luka went down. I didn't think he was going to come here and average almost 24 points a game and then do what he did in the playoffs. But that's where I really gained most of his respect because he was the guy why we won one game. I mean, Julius Randle disappeared. R.J. Barrett, for the most part, was up and down, and then the rest is history, right? So that's good. You know, we got to build on from there, and that's usually what happens. A year we made it to the playoffs and we lost in the first round, against the, the Hawks, what what happened the year after that? We completely went backwards. So I think one of the teams that the Knicks, what the Knicks needs to do this year, uh, we just need to keep improving. And one of the ways that we do that is absolutely is, you know, we got some free ending signings. Uh, we also got a, we still don't have that championship status player, man, that's going to take us and elevate us to a championship contention or, you know, NBA final status because, same team, we're in the same boat next year. Maybe we make it to the second round. We've been at the fifth seed. You know, nobody's beating Boston or okay. the 76ers or or the or the um or the Bucks. Okay, but, Gary, after your thoughts, I'm gonna throw a trade proposal out yeah. there. And I think you guys know what's gonna be coming next. But any of the thoughts okay. you may not have been to cut you off. No, no, you're good, you're good. Okay, Gary. So I wanna preface everything that I'm about to say, Eman, by letting everybody know I'm a diehard Lakers fan, despite being from New York. I respect the Knicks. But I've also been paying attention to this story most of my life. So mm-hmm. it's like, I know there was a reason why you, I'm looking at the poster on the background, like it, it, behind you. And I'm like, yeah, that was my childhood. Kobe Jordan, like that. That was where I, that, that was my upbringing. Saying that. I love everything that the Knicks did this season in terms of allowing Jalen Brunson to truly run at point guard. and you know, be that leader that they needed. You know, we've I've talked we've talked at nauseam on the show about Julius Randle and like what you're getting from him or what or the lack thereof. And I've said it repeatedly. 
if Julius Randle was meant to be a franchise player, he'd still be a Laker. Mm-hmm. Let's that, let's be very clear. Like mm-hmm. that was his franchise to have after Kobe retired. He went goes to New Orleans. He ends up in New York, and I will listen. He was an All Star. He put up the numbers. Like I'm not going to discredit him, but you know what the ceiling is with him. This doesn't seem like this is going to be one of these things that changes with him. You're going to get a great regular. Some players are just great regular season players, and Julius Randle is a great regular season player. But there are some people, and I've said, Jeff, you know what the phrase I'm about to use. They are allergic to springtime. They're allergic to playing Uh basketball in the spring. And for some reason, Julius has had allergies. He's been been (laughs) catching people for years left and right. James Harden, a habitual case. I don't Mm know. I don't know. I don't know how it's not terminal with them, but that's with them. I, I look at that that team and I'm going in the East. There has to be somebody like Brooklyn's going to be the team that's the odd man out for next mm-hmm. season. I think we can all come to to agreement with that. Like they're going to be the team out of the eight that made the playoffs this season. The Knicks have to remain in that mix, and I'm looking at you know I was trying to do a quick rundown of who would probably make the playoffs next season. You got your Boston's, mm-hmm. Cle- Boston, Cleveland, Miami, mm-hmm. most likely Milwaukee, Philadelphia. Then you have to kind of throw the Knicks in there because, you know, you don't know what you're getting out of Toronto. You don't know what you're getting out of Washington. You don't really know what you're getting out of Atlanta or any of these other teams. And, like, they ha- they have to remain in that six, and they have to take that next step. I think that three, four C can be for the taking if they can add one more piece. And I know Jeff, you're going to discuss that in the trade. So I'm let you go ahead. So if I'm the Knicks, right, they got to get a superstar. This is a team of just very, of just good average players. Jalen Brunson is a good point guard, but he cannot be your second best player. That's just what it is. Do you go after a Damian Lillard or do you go after a Bradley Beal? And if you do, what would a potential trade package look like? E-Man, you first. Well, you know, the Knicks do half. And, and I'm going to go Dame Lillard here. I, I'm going to go for the okay. biggest dog in the yard, right? Okay. I like I like Bradley Beal, right? I know, we need, I know we have a good point guard. We have an all-star type of point guard. You know, what he did in the playoffs is great. But Dame is Dame, all right? He is what you want in your team because he's shown it with a really with understaffed team, pretty much. He could take over games in the postseason. The man can do everything he could score. He's 32 years old. That's the only risk. But you still got maybe four years, three years left of really, really high-end basketball, MVP type of caliber basketball because the dude's hungry. You know, I'll go for Dame. So let's use Dame in this mix, regardless of having Brunson. We have assets, all right? We have turf first-round picks that we could move at any time in the next six years. We got young players with really good contracts that are eventually going to age out with quickly. Obi we topping? Quentin Grimes. Right. Typically, we may have to move a superstar right along the mix. That's what Randall or even in exchange, Brunson would go if we go after Lillard. So it depends on the player. Uh, RJ Barrett is up for sale, too. So we have the combination of picks for the next that we have available for the next 10 years. You know, the trades with Dallas, the other stuff that we did. And also we have the young expiring contracts and players are can, you know, can contribute right now. Quickly, Grimes, those guys that I just mentioned top in. Um, and then, of course, you know, you got some good contracts that are still in, good in the books. Because remember, it's all about money as well. They want to get, you know, when you want to trade your best player, one of the best players in the team, you want to get back contracts that are good for the books, players that can still play a little bit, and in exchange, somebody that can do that. And then, of course, graphics so I can replace Dane. And the Knicks check the box on every single one of them. Four years ago, I would have told you no, right? <laughs> but now we do have, and look, and Jalen's contract is so good. And if he keeps putting 24 points a game in a season, he's going to attract any team that wants to rebuild because he's still cheap and he's a hell of a player. So that's why, I mean, I would go for Dame. Dame doesn't work. You go for Lillard. And Lillard, most likely, you won't give up Jalen Bronson. You'll probably give up a, a Julius Randle, which my my um, my tag on him is uh, he's built for the regular season and not the postseason. That's who he's built for. And okay. practically, I think that's where you go. Depends on which player you're going after. Okay. I say three first-rounders. I say three first-rounders, maybe two protected or yeah. unprotected. Uh, Julius Randle's probably going to be in that trade. Obi mm-hmm. Totten, who I think can be a really good player if they actually if mm-hmm. he actually gets some burn, Gary. 
I say three first round picks, Obi Tottenham, maybe Julius Randle, Emmanuel quickly, like some some type of There's a lot of combinations. Oh yeah, easily. A lot of combinations. They have the assets. That's the the first thing. When you have the assets, bro, at this point is okay, let's see what they want, what we're willing to give up. And these then they have the combination of, you know, athletes. They got we got, you know, young good contracts, rookie contracts, and then also, you know, like really good players on the really not expensive contracts and all the picks. So facts. Facts. Gary, your thoughts? Of the two forwards, because they're going to have to keep Obi or Randall. Mm-hmm. They're not going to give up both in a trade unless unless you're going to get a decent enough forward in whatever trade you get. And I'm looking at Portland's roster. I'm like, mm, Jeremy Grant's not moving the needle. No. So one, one's got to stay. And of the two, I would lean towards Obi staying and Randall going just because mm-hmm. – Open Randall is a more established star, and frankly, like I said, even though he's allergic to the postseason, he plays every day, and he wants to play. He wants to give you eighty-two a season. Like I know he hurt his ankle at the end of the season, but he was well on his way to that. And <clears throat> with Obi, he showed you know he put up double-digit points. You know he was put up double fig- uh, figures. He did well when he was out. Yep. Right when when yep. Randall was out, so he showed like listen. I don't need to be put up 25 a night, but I'm able, I'm capable to put, give you like 16 and eight and still and hit threes. And my and his handle is a little bit better than Julius's. Let's be, but that's not he's more athletic too. He, he's a, he, he can run the court and he's younger. And I think, and, and, and the contracts, so you look at all those factors. So I'm like, of those two, Randall's the likelier of the two to go. Now, who does he go for? In that case, it leans towards a Bradley Beal trade over Dame Lillard because you can't as much. I I know Jalen Brunson's contract is very you know friend is is cap friendly is very yep. trade friendly and all that. But on the flip side of that, it, it's you're going to be really hard. It's going to be hard to sell making that trade and going okay. We're trading for the 32 year old who may have you know who does have a few years left. But, you know, we've seen older established superstars come to New York and it fall flat on its face. So I'm still going. You have to go younger. You have to go with the youth. That's why you keep a Jalen Brunson in that situation. And frankly, putting him and Dame Lillard together in your backcourt is two, is two players who both need the ball in their hands at all times, and that's not going to work. So I'm leaning, in this case, towards Bradley Beal. And it's been very clear, Beal wants to leave. Lillard's been up and, you know, back and forth about this. And while Beal doesn't have no, has the no trade clause, he wants to go. It's, the, writing's on, the writing's on the wall. He's not getting a championship in Washington. Mm-hmm. So he needs I mean, to go ahead. That contract was good. Yeah, they, they'll restructure that. That's going to be part of the whole trade. Oh, yeah. Be, yeah you know, there's going to be restructuring. And because – you know, everybody's kind of on the wait and see because there's going to be that new TV deal that comes in after. Mm-hmm. If not, I know it's not this season, but the season after that. So there's going to be even more money. Right. Mm-hmm. It's going to go through the roof. So, and side note, NBC is trying to get back in that game. So you know this can be even oh, yeah. easier money. So this is – all the all these moves have to be very smart and very calculated because of that coming down the road. Facts. Yeah. I got one quick last one. Ready? Now, yeah. it's not just Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard who are up with chops. Rumors will trade Young as well, even though those are, that's far as fetch. And the latest one, and I don't know if you guys have heard that also, right? If And this might happen this season. I don't think it's going to win. But they, Joel Embiid is not very happy, if the and which is stupid, if they don't keep James Harden. I don't know why. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> my there's, God. There's no way that the Sixers will trade within its own division, especially no, no. For, to a rival like the Knicks. So no, no. that's wishful thinking. But I <laughs> yeah. just want to say real quick, one that's out there that has been discussed, and honestly, I'm not sure because I don't like his how his game translates in the playoffs either, is Paul George. Yes. You know, I think again, there like a, a George for a Randall trade mm-hmm. seems to be like what everybody's tossed out there. It's like I get it, but that one doesn't move the needle. If it's five years ago, okay, that moves the needle for me. But George is injured, still mm-hmm. older, a little bit injury p- prone. So like, you know, if he's not doing it in L.A. for the Clippers, what makes you think he's going to do it for us here in New York? No, absolutely. 
Yeah, Knicks. They are they are they're always going to be a very intriguing team because that fan base is so hungry for a championship. It's years. And I mean, it's just been so long. And if it's I'm years. the Knicks, they got to go for it. If Bradley Beal is available, if Damon Lillard is available, they got to do it. Like if not now, then when? Like you like you just you got to do it. So Knicks, GM, whoever you are, if you're watching, doubtful, but if you are just make the damn move. Just do it. Anyway, Jets, another team that's dying for a championship. As we know, we'll get to Aaron Rodgers, but I just want to put some numbers here. Mm-hmm. Points per game, they were 29th. Points against per game, they were fourth. Total yards per game, they were 24th. Yards allowed, they were third. Total yards per game, they were 17th. And takeaways per game, they were 21st. There was a stat that came out that they went 7-10 and 10 last year, I believe if I'm putting that correctly. Yeah. And they had the most one score losses out of any team in the AFC, I believe, between five or seven losses. Yeah, something like that. If they had averaged, they averaged about they had averaged about 17.4 points per game. If they had averaged, I think, six to seven more points per game, they would have won those games at seven and ten. So Gary, I'm gonna throw it to you first, buddy. Is Aaron Rodgers good enough to be able to move the needle based on those numbers? When the uh, trade went down, I posted, congratulations, Jets fans, on a 12-5 and season and a loss in the divisional round. So that's what we're looking at with, with Aaron Rodgers. And I think that, yes, I think he will – he'll live up to the hype enough to at least get the Jets into that – like island of relevancy, as it were. Like, so eleven, twelve wins seems to be about where they're where they're going to be. And you know, you have to keep an eye out on Buffalo and the whole thing with Stephon mm-hmm. Dix and all that. You have to keep an eye out there. The Patriots, I, I think, I think the sun set on that franchise. And Miami, I know everybody thinks that Miami's is quite sexy pick to to go far in the AFC. No. Ooh, baby. He's he's not reliable health wise. So that's that's a huge factor. Right. And uh, unless unless you're going to tell me that two is going to have a Jalen Hurst type season this year, coming season. Nah. Like they'll be good, but I think they'll be wild card good where they basically were last season anyway. So, um, you know, I think for the Jets, this will be like they're they're finally relevant. They're finally at a point where. Other teams are jealous and envious of them, and it's a weird feeling. I don't know as a Giants fan if I like it, but whatever. Like, you know, I I think hell, th- this is something that my dad watched in his childhood. My dad's seventy one years old, about to be seventy one. So I'm like, I'm asking him, like, hey, what is this like? I, I don't. It's a little foreign to me. So. Okay, thanks, Eman. You know. And I'm going to start with 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 uh, from the bottom to the top, right? I'm going to leave Aaron for last. Gary Wilson, potential to be top five or the number one freaking wide receiver in the league. That's how talented this kid is. What he did last year with Joe Flacco, Shaq Milton, Milson, all right, uh, and uh, Mike White, almost he had over 1,100 receiving yards, four touchdowns, 83 receptions. Okay, he had a bunch of cab drivers throwing them the ball, and this kid showed. Show show how good he is because he has some games. He went like, holy smokes, man. He cannot be guarded, right? Brees Hall in the limited time, all right, before the injury. I mean, this kid, this kid is just plain nasty. So you got right now two of the best offensive position players right now potentially in the league because Brees Hall last year in what, seven games, 80 carries, four touchdowns, 463 yards. You saw what he could do. But what, what even impressed me the most, he could also catch the damn football. I think he had like 19 receptions over three games, 219 yards and a touchdown. So offensively, we know what, what they could do with those two guys if they have a good quarterback, and that's where Aaron comes in, right? Good pieces there. And then you go, they brought Adam Lazard and everybody else and their mother. Uh, all the regular pieces, we don't, we don't have a lot of time to discuss every single one of them. That's but okay. then you have the defense, right? The defense, top five defense in the NFL. I'm a huge Robert Sala guy because we saw him, saw him coaching in, in uh, San Francisco. The dude get these players going, especially defensive players. I mean. Everything is tailor-made to win now for that team. Check all the boxes, right? Great wide receiver, all the role players around. You know, Lazard's going to be there for the safety blanket of uh, Rodgers, right? And everybody else he requested. And then you have a, a stud running back if he doesn't get hurt. This guy can be 
can put up Saquon numbers. Absolutely both ways. He could catch it and he could run it. He's just a power guy. And uh, you have on the defensive side, one of the probably the best corner upcoming soon in South Garden, right? And even Aaron Rodgers said, this is what he said at uh, OTAs, we've got at some point possibly the best corner and the best receiver in the NFL. That's what he thinks about Sauce and, uh, and Garrett Wilson. And I tend to actually agree with him, regardless of his, you know, of his uh, ego and uh, bigger to life, you know, aura that he has. But at the end of the day, my man, is Super Bowl or bust, right? Tom Brady set it up. Tom Brady set the standard, right? Tom Brady said, I want more support. I want more weapons. I'm going to go get them somewhere else. He did. Won the Super Bowl in his first year. Aaron is in the same freaking boat. Same standard, same scenario. He wanted to leave a team that had played for most of his career, won one Super Bowl, was successful, put some great numbers, what, three, four MVPs, whatever the case may be. Look, there's no no other option. Like you said, hey, 12 and five, but a, like a divisional round loss, that's a complete waste of a, of a season. You see, I look at it based on the schedule as well, right? Because the first game against the Panthers, that's going to be a win. Mm-hmm. Buccaneers at home, going to be a win. Jets versus Giants, that's going to be a toss up. Then they got the Bills, then the Cowboys, Patriots, still division game. Then the next couple games, they have a three games between – they have the Chiefs, the Broncos, at Denver, and they got the Eagles. Mm-hmm. That first that first half, it's – you know, they could – that's going to be a gauntlet. That three-game stretch, I think, is going to be very, very interesting. But then towards the end of the season, they have a little bit more easy – they have some easy games. If they could come out two and one in that stretch, they got the first half of their season is going to be very crucial for them. If they could come out four and four, they got to have a winning record coming out of that. I still see this team as third in the division behind the Dolphins. If if Mr. Concussion cannot get concussed, mm-hmm. then they have a chance. It's all on that man's forehead. Mm-hmm. If that man's forehead is right, they're going to be relevant. And especially if they get Dalvin Cook. I'm, I'm, something's telling me that Miami's going to get Dalvin Cook. Gary, I feel like you have something to say, sir. No, I'm just pointing out for Jets fans that are trying to anoint Aaron Rodgers as the savior. Aaron Rodgers, since Super Bowl 45, when he won, uh, obviously he won Super Bowl, has been to the NFC Championship game once. He's missed the playoffs a few times. He's lost in the wild card a few times, lost in the divisional. One NFC Championship game since winning Super Bowl 45. So, while yes, I think he will do better at, with the Jets this season than he had been doing as of late with the Packers. Like, I know it's Super Bowl or bust, but like, like Jeff said, there's going to be, like, the AFC East is going to be drama filled this season. Even. Even with the Patriots not being the best team in the AFC East anymore, they're still going to be there and cause ruckus because that's all Bill Belichick knows how to do is cause ruckus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I think that if they're going to win this, like you man, you, you mentioned Brees Hall, like if he can be healthy, they gotta, they have to have a balance attack, I think, mm-hmm. and that defense is going to have to be really good. If they're relying on Aaron Rodgers to just sling the ball and throw for 5,000 yards a game, that's not going to get it done. But from an X and O standpoint, Eman, are they going to win based on the? Is it going to be the offense that carries them, or is it going to be the defense? I think it's going to be. They're not going to ask Ryan Rodgers to do too much because if you think about it, right? Apart from Brees Hall, look at the, the backup running backs, right? Send the night. Forget who the. I haven't. I forget who the other one is. They, I don't know if they kept uh, what's his name, the guy they traded for. Um, oh, um, um, oh God, I forget. But I mean, they do What's have the two. They, they have two. Yeah, they have, yeah. Mike, Michael Carter's still there. They still have two running, two good running backs behind them that are going to play well with Aaron Rodgers, and then that's also to release Brees, so he could not be the workhorse. So they they, they have they have a well balanced attack. I mean, Garrett Wilson, Lazar, and and everybody else they have at the wide receiver. They 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 are, and, and even tight end. They do. I mean, Conklin. Uh, they they have you know uh, Ozuma. They have really they have a lot of good weapons. When you look on paper, they, do. they have Randall Cobb. Well, right, well, yeah. <laughs> Randall Cobb is there for the water passing, bro. You know what I mean? He's, uh, he's carrying the suitcases, all right? Uh, but he's there for motivational support here. Uh, but, yeah, no, they. I think it's going to be a combination of both. It's going to be one of the things that the defense is going to benefit from that offense, and the offense is going to benefit from the defense. So it's going to be one of those give-and-take kind of thing, unlike last year, that the only right. reason why they won, it was that right. defense just being such a, a great defense. They just could not stay off the field the rest as long, so. So let's so let's uh, Gary and then back to you, man. 
how many wins are we going to say? Gary, you're sticking with 12 wins, 12 and 5? 12 and 5. Lost in the original round. Okay. I go with 11. I'll bet you, okay, you're going to go 11? I'll go 11. I will bet each of you a dollar that they're going to go 9 and 8. Wow. I will bet you, I will bet you a whole dollar. I just don't. Wow. I just really, there's just something. It's off of a gut feeling. Again, this is only June. Something could happen. Mm -hmm. But I just, Gary made some very good points, and he had a very bad season last year. And a lot of, he started playing better towards the second half, but I really think that age for him is going to be a factor. We think that everyone's going to be a Tom Brady. He ain't no Tom Brady. Age 40, um, I just think Father Tom's undefeated, and I just think that there's going to be a huge drop off. That's just my that's just my opinion. Um, but sorry, Jets fans. But uh, let's talk about your favorite team, Gary. These Giants. So by the numbers, and this is all going to come in, and I'll throw it to you, man. Daniel Jones had thir- three thousand two hundred five passing yards. Saquon Barkley had one thousand three hundred twelve. The leading scorer, the leading guy, was Darius Slate with seven hundred twenty four yards. Points per game, fifteenth. Points against per game, seventeenth. Total yards per game, eighteenth. Yards allowed per game, they were 26th. Turnovers per game, they were second, which is not bad. And takeaways per game, they were 29th. Um, Iman, um, with the whole Saquon Barkley situation, um, they made it the way they did, not because of Daniel Jones, uh, because of Saquon. And Saquon literally carried that team on his back. Your yeah. thoughts? Yeah. I mean, look, Saquon's got a good sign, by the way. You got it to July 17th. That's going to happen. This is just a matter of its negotiations. The Giants would be the dumbest team in the league if they want to play chicken with Saquon. And Saquon is actually a, a quality dude in real life. You know what I mean? He's one of those guys that you cannot avoid but to love the kid because he says everything right, great on and off the field, right? And um, But they'll be stupid not to because, yes, he was their best offensive weapon. That's He was his best offensive weapon. He's the reason why Daniel Jones was able to rush for 700 yards as well and score seven touchdowns, right? This offense was built for the skill set of Daniel Jones because Daniel Jones can throw it. He just didn't have anybody yeah. to throw it deep. He didn't have anybody to throw it short. He didn't have anybody else receiver-wise, right? That's where Darren Wallace comes in, which was, I think it was a, it's a good risk. You gave up a third-round pick. If Darren is healthy, he's the best wide receiver for the New York Giants, which puts another layer into that offense, right? Because they're going to try to run the same thing again. Um, However, I don't think we're still deep enough where we need to be in regards to, you know, we need another wide receiver. I mean, I like Shep is great coming back. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's a security blanket. But look, we have a bunch of fours and threes in that, you know, as wide receivers. Darren Waller, if he's healthy, he's your number one receiver. All right. He is like your number one receiver right now off the bat because of everything that he could do. And of course, Daniel Jones is loving him in OTAs, right? And uh, this, well, this uh, training right now uh, that they're doing, right? They love, of course, because he has, he's the, he's the most gifted guy he's ever thrown the ball to. Right now, since in the four years he's been there, who else? So okay. I honestly think that, yeah, it, Saquon's got to get signed. Uh, I don't think everybody is set up this high. And Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, because we had such an unexpected success last year. We over exceeded the expectations by 100. All right. Uh, I knew we were going to have probably a better season with a healthier Saquon, but a second round win, getting to the second round of the playoffs. And we beat a really good Minnesota team, which I was in, I was confident we were. We looked good. Danny Dimes played probably the best game of the season. We we see what Danny Dimes can do in a good offense as Taylor made for him. That's why I love Brian Dable. But you cannot win if you don't have a guy that can go up for those 50-50 balls and a stud. That's why I hope we could pull a rabbit out of a hat and be the unexpected individual that grabs DeAndre. Pass. That would solidify DeAndre at this age and this level is still better than any wide receiver the yeah, Giants yeah. have right now, not counting your tight end. All right. And better he's than anyone, 31. you know, anyone who he's, he's uh, Daniel Jones ever thrown to. He's only 31. Everyone's yeah, acting but, like you know, he's, he's had some injuries. And yeah, he's he, had know. some injuries. Yeah. But I mean, the man's only 31. The man yeah. still has a good, at least three years tops at minimum. Even if he's not having elite wide receiver yeah, one status, even at a bottom like one A, he's still a hell of a player. But Garrett, your thoughts? We overachieved like a mother last year. Yeah, bro. I still <laughs> scared that. Just be. I I don't want to be Debbie Down or anything like that. But like, let's be very clear about this. Nobody, and not even I am as ardent of a giant fan. I'm as diehard as it gets. 
I Jeff, what did I asked for last season? Six wins. <laughs> yeah. I bet the, the the seven. All right, I bet seven wins is my so, beginning of the year. Over the course of the last ninety one episodes, I think I've said it at least eighteen or nineteen times now. That's all I asked for this this past season was six wins. I wanted marked improvement from what I've seen the last few years, and I got marked improvement from the last few years. And frankly, like, I couldn't be happier. But I also was happy in 2016 when we went 11 and five, and oh hey, we're looking all right, and Eli's not dead yet. No, mm-hmm. we're we're gonna be okay. And we go four and twelve or three and thirteen the next season. Oof. Yeah. And uh, Ben Macadon had to leave. So, <laughs> like, ben Macadon. Yes. So, you know, there, there's a level of me that's like, we spoke about cautious optimism. Mm-hmm. This is where my cautious optimism is right here because I'm like, okay, we played the schedule that we had in front of us. We, play, we were gifted mm-hmm. a crap schedule because we played like crap the season before. So, there's a lot of that, like, we have to also look at the whole picture, look at, like, we had a third-place schedule because we finished in third place the season before. So you are, you're you going to do one of two things. You're either going to fall backwards or you're going to go forward. So, fortunately, they fell forward. And, you know, Philly was, Philly was the juggernaut that they were. Yeah. But, you know, I was telling Jeff, you know, during the point – at one point when they were 6-1, and one, I'm like, there's a distinct chance with how the season was playing out at that point that they were going to go into the Thanksgiving game against Dallas at nine and one. And I'm like, that seems like a fever dream of any giant fan ever. So, you know, for them to finish where, how they finished for them to make the playoffs. I will say this about Minnesota till the day that they actually win something. Mm-hmm. They were the most Fugazi 13 and four team in history. So the Giants beating them was not an upset. That okay. wasn't even match. That was very much like the Knicks and the Cavs in the NBA. That was actually a real even matchup, and the Giants happened to just get them at home at at at, 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 at Minnesota. <clears throat> so like, you know, we look at all those things. You're right. We have to get somebody. We have to get DeAndre Hopkins. We have to get Daniel Jones more weapons. We also have to take away the ball a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like you can't be 29th in the league in, in, in defense mm-hmm. and have the fewest interceptions. Speaking of Daniel Jones, I know we said you had no weapons, but bro, 15 <laughs> touchdowns and five interceptions ain't going to do it. Like we, that 15 and five is the, again, I like we used to use the word Fugazi, but I'm like, no, that, that was lightning in a bottle. That's we, we caught that one time. That's not going to fly again. Cause now, You've been exposed. You've yep. had a whole season of, okay, he's actually better than we think. He's just had terrible coaching the last few years. So, you know, yeah. the pressure's on. The, the yeah. schedule that they have now is indicative of that. Oof. And speaking of the schedules, I'm just going to call a couple of de- games here. And they already have Vegas favorites, which is weird to me. They're, they got, obviously, the Cowboys week one. Dallas is a favorite by three. Always, they got the Cardinals. Always, always bro. Why? Yeah, the why Card- must you always start in that? Like I know, man. Now, like last season was a nice anomaly, but like just every year. Since yeah, dude, every year. year <laughs> every year. My birth, we started the season in friggin' Dallas. Yeah, yeah, you got then you're favored by four against the Cardinals in week two. Then the 49ers are five and a half point favorite at 49ers. Then you're favored against the Seahawks, but that could go up and that that could that's a toss up. Yeah. Then you got Miami. Miami. Then you got the Bills. The Bills are a seven-point favorite right now. Again, that's just right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I see you guys potentially only having two wins to start off in your first five or six. I mean, 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 you got the Jets after the Commanders. Commanders could be a win. And then you got – you guys could legitimately go like two and six to start the season. And I'm not even trying to say that to – I mean, that's a a rough start to your schedule there, E-Man. Look, I mean, an echo in on Gary, right? That fifteen and five, by the way, was tailor made. But that's what they wanted him to do. You know, they're they're not gonna. They say, listen, you're not gonna force the ball. You're not. You only got to take your shots when they're there. I mean, when they're really, really there, because we're you're not gonna have a lot of shots to take downfield. Right. Uh, and that's where Waller comes in this year, right? Uh, but still, I don't think that, that our team is that vertical, right? We still just a little bit better 
if, of course, if Waller doesn't get hurt, you know, Shep comes back, you know, a shade of himself because he's not like a super. He's on he's number three again. Who do we draft from Tennessee? Like the kid, great speed, great separation, but that's all he does. All right? Which we needed because we didn't have anybody doing that. I forget the wide receiver from Tennessee. Um, uh, he's great separation, great speed, but he's not a guy that's going to give you, you, know, you got to give him nine targets a game, all right, or seven targets a game. It's got to be, he's a Max. one-trick pony. You need it. You need, you need a guy like that in every lineup when you usually have a DK Metcalf, when you usually have a DeAndre Hopkins, right? When you usually have, yeah. you know, studs like that, man. Um, Devontae Adams, you always have a separation guy and you got your stud. We don't have our stud. So, yes, everybody's going to be onto it. It's going to be another great coaching job by that Giants coaching uh, team there because you're going to have to figure out how to make Daniel Jones again with what you have successful with very limited weapons. And the fact that they're going to know that, shoot, they got to give a, they're going to play action and Jones is going to run for five yards and pick up the first down or score a touchdown or that kind of stuff. Because that's what they did a lot last year, right? Saquon, yeah. Saquon, Saquon. Hey, hey, it's uh, third and two. Here goes Jones bootleg. Hey, he's going to run it because, you know, he has decent speed, that kind of crap, or or a quick dump of somewhere. Right. They, they know that already. We we ran yeah. that down. That was a bread and butter. We ran that down through people's throat over and over again last year. They, you know, this is the NFL. They're, they're going to be up yeah. there right. around that. Yeah, and Gary, you guys got really lucky with a lot of those close score games. Yeah. And this year is going to be crowding the box, eight men in the box, forcing Daniel Jones to throw. Yep. And the thing that's really scary is that he forcing him to be more of a passer and forcing them to play defenses and single coverage when you don't really have that type of stud receivers. Mm-hmm. That's y'all going to struggle a little bit to score points, Gary. No, yeah, like, like you said, like we need we need to have you know our, our weapons better established. You know, Strong Shepherd, he he on paper would be a number one. But that's on paper. His mm-hmm. body is not held up long enough for him to show that he can be a number one. And, you know, like I said, you have Darren Waller. Listen, yes, he's going to be your number one as far as the as far as weapons goes. But he's also an older tight end. Like, it, you know, st- not not everybody's a Gronk. No. Not, not everybody's a Tony Gonzalez. Not, every, Kelsey. Not, not everybody's a Kelsey. Not everybody's an Antonio Gates who – Yep. Has just this ridiculously long career as a tight end. Like, not everybody's going to hit that, and I don't think that Darren Waller. He's good. Don't get me wrong, but that's about it. Yeah, so, you know, this ha- there has to be. If we don't establish, or we don't get a DeAndre Hopkins or make a trade during the season for somebody, it's going to be a long year. You know, and, and for Giants fans to yeah. be happy about that. So let's and before we because I want to get to some Yankees and Mets here. That's going to be fun. So Eman, how many wins for your Giants and then you, Gary? Oh man, ten. All right, I'll bet you fifty cents on that. Yeah, Gary, being optimistic. <laughs> I'm going to say nine and eight. Um, okay. I'm good, but it, it's going to be a lot of one score games yeah. in that nine. Like they're going to. It's gonna be a lot of coaching them through wins. Like I said, I I, I believe in Brian Dayball as a coach. Mm-hmm. I think Me too. He he coached his ass off last season. Like, there's a reason why he won coach of the year. It wasn't a Absolutely. joke. It wasn't because of the records. Because clearly, you saw that effort. You saw a different change, a, a, a whole change in effort, mm-hmm. which Giants fans could tell. It was tangible. It was palpable. Like this is a man who week one was like, no, screw this. We're going for it right now. We're going for mm-hmm. the win. In any other season. We would have kicked, gone for overtime, and then hey, we would have lost it overtime. Not nope. well. There you go. Here we go again. Dable is showing like he has the cojones to do it. We need to follow suit and show like as a team that we trust our coach and that we're going to go run through a wall for this man, like many of these other great coaches have their players do. Okay. Change the culture. Hey. So, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. It's going to be very exciting. The 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 Giants, I think are going to be a team that I'm closely going to be watching. But football season's right around the corner, guys. Yep. Training camp starts in, what, five, five, five and a half weeks? Yep. I'm excited. Man, I, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I uh, can't wait to see my Broncos go 4-13, and 13, man. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll see what happens. The state of these New York Mets. Got to run it down by the numbers here. Runs per game, 18, batting average. 20th batting two, a whopping 240, 17th on base percentage, 19th in slugging, 
21st in hits per game, well, seventh in home runs, that's great. Stolen mm-hmm. bases, eighth, but ERA, 25th, and errors, 13th. Specifically, E-Man, batting average, runs per game, and ERA, they're at the bottom half of the league with the highest payroll in baseball. Yeah. Talk to me, buddy, because these three hundred and forty have been one in nine in their last 10 games. We waxed that ass last night on the comeback, so that's good. I don't know what's going on today. I haven't looked at the score. But I know we started one, one, a later. We're up 3-1 in the top of the up three, Okay, there we go. Yeah, I know we started late. There was a delayed game and stuff like that. By the way, I got the Yankees today. I picked the Yankees on my money line on my um, one of my good stakes. Uh, oh, I can't uh, go home. Nice. Yeah, exactly. But here, here's the thing with the Mets, right? Uh, that's what happens when you invest all your money on your top two pitchers who's 40 years old and 39, regardless of how great of a Hall of Fame career they have. That's one of the reasons why they're in this in this position, right? Verlander is, you know, starting uh, off uh, not on the right way here. Scherzer is up and down, depending on what it is. Those are your top two guys, all right? Uh, of course, your offense is not there. You got, you're got you battling the injuries. 36, 31, and 36 in fourth place in the National League East was not what they hoped for. And you kind of knew it was going to be a dumpster fire season when your closers got hurt and the World Baseball Classic celebrating and tears his ACL or whatever the hell it was, all right, just jumping up and down because they beat a team. That's kind of the – if you're a Mets fan, which I'm not, you know, but, you know, I, I, I root for them every once in a while when, you know, right. for, for whatever reason. Uh, there's other teams that I hate more. But, uh, look, they um, – you knew it was going to be a bad season. And, and what's nuts is that it could be worse for the Mets, right? And I'm going to give you some scenarios, right, because I want to throw – this is the Mets. I like to throw some humor at the Mets. You always got to pick on the Mets. They're, you know, they're of sort course. of the redheaded stepchild of the New York uh, <laughs> baseball scene in New York. So, but, but think about this, right? It could be a lot worse. And, you know, the people wait, what do you mean? Jacob DeGrom is out for the season with Texas, right? Free agent loss. Noah Syndergaard has one of the worst ERA through through 50 innings, all right, in the National League at 716. Steven Matz and Carlos Correa could have also been Mets this year, all right? Look at Carlos Correa with all the drama that happened. The dude is, is batting, what, 213 mm-hmm. right now? 217 for eight homers while striking out a career high at 24% for plate appearances? So we could have given this guy what three hundred and fifty million dollars. That could have been even worse. There, you know, add more you know injury yeah. to uh the more salt to the wound, right? More insult to injury. You know, Stephen Matz, who we let go a couple of years ago, we were probably going to give that guy. He got forty one million from um from what's his name from the St. Louis Cardinals, and he's like he's he has like one of the worst ERAs, like zero and six, zero and seven, was sent to the bullpen. So things are really bad for the Mets right now, and and unfortunately they don't have a way to fix it because all their eggs are in one basket. They don't. They don't have enough assets to go ahead and trade for somebody that's going to help them turn around. You say 31 and 36, you know, they, they're still going to be in it because that division is not the best. And, you know, 85 wins might get them into the wild card, but it's not looking good. And it's hard, you know, when your two best pitchers, who are Hall of Famers, by the way, and proven in this league, are 40 and 39. So. Yeah, and Gary, you know, the reason why I put it in, in so many good points and the reason why I wanted to be able to put those numbers is because there's so many issues with this team. Pete Alonso's out now for yep. three to four weeks. So it's like everything, everything is wrong. They're in the mm-hmm. bottom half of every major statistical category, and their payroll is $543 million. Ooh. Verlander and, and uh, Scherzer. Scherzer are making $86 million combined yeah. in this season. Gary. Somewhere the ghost of George Steinbrenner is smiling from ear <laughs> to ear. You can't you can't do what George Steinbitter did in his heyday, which was just throw boo hoo dollars at, at at whoever with the hope of winning a championship. I used to joke and say that the Yankees were the greatest group of adults money can buy, mm-hmm. but that was really kind of the truth. Like they, you know, when you're able to play with that kind of money, you get the best players. Now you're getting the best players from about five, six, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'm saying like with Ver- Verlander and Scherzer, you know, these were the mistakes that George Steinbrenner made towards the end, going to get the established names, even though that they were older and really more toward in, on the back nine of their careers. That was a Steinbrenner move post the World Series runs. Like, he kept trying and trying and trying and never really got back to it and really only got to it in 09. He wasn't even really running the team at that point. Mm-hmm. So, you know, hopefully, for Steve Cohen, this is a lesson learned. I know you have the money to spend, but you have to be smart with how you spend it because look at your team. Like, 
you said Pete Alonso's out for three to four weeks. You know, their lineup is not there. There are no world beaters in that lineup. And mm-hmm. then, you know, your rotation is meh. Like, it's, it's just there. Yeah. You know, yes, this is not what Steve Cohen wanted, but this is when they say buyer beware, this is what they mean. Like, you have to be smart with how you spend. You look at teams like Tampa, who has what, at eighth of what the, uh, of the uh, Mets payroll for this season? And have the best record in baseball. Yep. It's not an accident. They were smart. They used That's... their farm system. They drafted well. Like they actually utilized the draft properly, unlike most major league teams. Like they, they they did this the right way. And if come October they're the ones hoisting the trophy at the end, it won't be a shock. No, they're absolutely Facts. absolutely. Yeah. No doubt. You know, and it's crazy. They were showing in the game, the Yankees game. The top seven teams in payroll, you had uh, obviously you had the Yankees, you had the Mets, mm-hmm. you had the Angels, the Dodgers. Uh, you had the, Dodgers. the Dodgers, the Phillies. Two out of those seven teams is right now, as of right now, are positioned to make the playoffs in the wild card. None of them are leading their division. Like oh. this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amy. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Finish. No, I'm just saying. Like when yeah. it comes to baseball, it's not about swinging it out the damn ballpark. It's about getting on base. It's about getting outs. That's what the that's what the Rays do. They get outs. They get on base. They play slow, methodical baseball, and they get outs. But he meant real quick, and then we'll get to the Yankees. Oh, they've been doing that since uh, their first uh, World Series run in thousand and uh, what five or six? Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Yeah, I was I was in Tampa actually for a trade. You know, I, I live in I moved out of New York about eighteen years ago. I, I can't. I, can't, I don't like the cold guys. I'll be honest with you, man. I, I grew <laughs> up there. Did I moved back to Arizona. Yeah, I, dude, I, I love. I, I love Florida, man. I mean, shit. I, I could root for my teams. I'm hated here because you know it's it's a rival city in basketball. So, right. but I remember I was going to Tampa a lot for work, and um, and I'm in Miami. So I remember watching. At, every bar was packed. You know, everybody was happy. But that team was the same way they drafted then and played that style of baseball. The same style of baseball they're playing 20 years later. You know, like almost right. 20 years later, right? You know, small right. ball, good pitching, move the runners. They're not relying on the long ball like every other team wants to do. That's how they they load up, right? They load up with a lot of home run hitters and all that crap in today's game. But they stick to what got the Yankees three, five straight championships, right? Yeah. That kind of Thanks. you know four straight championships. That kind of stuff, man. What you when players got on scoring position, you drove them in. Facts, facts. Let's and let's wrap up with these Yankees, man, because the Yankees, um, you know, I. I mean, I could sit here and break down the stats for this one, but we watched the Yankees, so yeah. there's no need for me to restate those. Um, you know, if I had to say the state of the Yankees, I have to say injury flux, mm-hmm. yeah. the injuries, because Carlos Rendon, we knew that was going to happen. Luis Severino hasn't had, hasn't pitched in 20, hasn't had 28 starts or more since 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, Anthony Volpe, I think needs to go back down to the minors. There kind of comes a point where you have to start to question that. Um, I mean, there's so many different places to go, but I want to first ask you guys a question. Anthony Volpe, does he stay up or does he go down? E-man. You know, I, I see the potential. I'm one of those people that, because you see some games that, you know, he struggles. He has a good glove, right? He's fast in the pads. He's struggling with hitting the ball. You know, two, two something he's hitting, like 217, two something. But there was a game that he might hit a home run. I do see shades of of the kid that the potential of him, and the only way he's got to get better is by getting at bat to the major league level. So, at least for the remainder of this year, unless he goes Mendoza line for the next fifty games, yeah, then you bring him down. But if he stays what he's doing right now, he, the only way he's got to improve is by keep giving him at bats. Remember, and of course, I'm not comparing him to Jeter because you know, everybody throws that in there. Or Jeter struggled a lot in the first half of the season. Jeter won that rookie of the year. I mean, he was a bat in 217, but he was like 230, 240, 250. He did not get hot and hit 300 in the second half of the season, which drove his average to like 290, I think, or something like that. And um, it was because of the second half of the season. And he was making errors like crazy, right? He was like all over the place. But I think having the at-bats, uh, the team getting better together, you know, getting used to the speed of the game and this level, I, I think it definitely benefits Jeter. And I don't think this kid's going to win the rookie of the year, but I think if he starts, if he keeps showing minimal improvement, I think this is what you want to see, minimal improvement. If he goes downhill, then, yeah, you have to make a move and put somebody else that's going to get you better performance. But I think he's doing enough to stay and earn the opportunity to keep getting at bat so he can improve. That's my take on both. I, I like okay, it. Okay, respect. 
Yeah, I respect it, Gary. Your thoughts and then step that you have. No, I couldn't say couldn't have said better myself. I think, you know, Hal Steinbrenner's come out there and said it. This isn't going to be like you're going to be up here for a little while. Then we'll send you back down. The best trial by fire is going to be the way that this kid's going to learn how to play this game. And he's, you know, it's it's going to be one of those either he's going to sink or he's going to swim. Mm-hmm. And I think he's shown enough that he's probably going to end up being a decent swimmer. I don't know. You don't. You can't compare him to Jeter. That's not yep. fair. And you know. He has to establish his own legacy and who he is as a person, as a player. Um, so I think if, as long as, as Yankee fans, we get that out of our heads, and let him just develop and let him be who he is. Like, you know, I think we there, there will be a place for him on this lineup. He may not be the face of the franchise. Clearly that's Aaron Judge at this point. But, you know, he's going to be – he can be who, – I guess who would I compare him to? Almost a Chuck Knobloch type. Yeah, he, he could do that. I mean, I think. Yeah, he like that. Has, has those moments. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's not like I look back and go, oh, I need to go get my Chuck Knobloch jersey. I'm not exactly. Gonna, I'm not I'm not there with him on that yet. Yeah, maybe I I would love to be wrong. I would love to be get to the point where I'm getting my kids uh, Anthony Volpe jerseys. Like, I, I, I really want to go mm-hmm. and get, get to that point. But – much like every other thing that we've talked about, Yankee wise, uh, sports wise for New York, talks of optimism. I think that there is clearly is room for growth, and I think that if he, as long as he keeps working at it, he's going to get there. Now, okay. the interesting stat that I had: the Yankees, if this holds up, will end up with a. Um, if this win holds up, it'll be they'll be forty and twenty nine. One, two, three other divisions, they'd be leading the division. Yep. But in the AL East, they're in third, no matter mm-hmm. what they do after, after this night's over with. And that right there is telling of, A, how strong the AL East is and how much of a dogfight that is. Mm-hmm. And, B, parity is real in sports. And now it's real. It, it's it, it's kind of crept its way through football. It's crept its way through hockey. You know, you saw an AC kind of you know make the Santa Finals there. You saw it in the NBA this season, especially in the West, where mm-hmm. no really stood out other than Denver, which surprise, surprise, how that season ended. And now you're seeing in baseball, everybody's just a little bit, of, except for the Dodgers, the Braves, mm-hmm. and the Rays, everybody's kind of creeping around that 500 mark. And, you know, for the Yankees and for the Orioles, who, let me say on the side, the Orioles fans, this isn't going to last. No, no. All right. Sorry, I I don't want to disrespect you all. I love Baltimore. I love uh-huh. the city of Baltimore. Hometown. Come like, on now. <laughs> like, like, let's see, let let's see how you're doing in August before you before you sit there and try to show us. So and it's, it's a long season, bro. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, it is. It long is. season. And, and yeah, and no doubt. And let's not forget about the Nationals back in 2019 are the mm-hmm. most recent example. They were completely out of it and made on went on a ridiculous run and won They're the freaking World Series. The Yankees had the best record in baseball at one point and almost gave up the division. Mm-hmm. So it's year. almost better that, yeah, it's almost better that they're not peaking yet. And I still think that the, the Rays, their pitching staff has been obliterated with injuries. That That's going to, that's going to play into it. That, that That's just going to play. I don't see Zach Eflin being a freaking Cy Young candidate in September. I don't see it, but E-Man high level thoughts. What are your thoughts on the Yankees? Can they make it back? Can they make a run? Just your overall thoughts about the Yankees, then you, Gary, and then we'll conclude. So first and foremost, they are going to be making trades, all right? We do have holes. We have injuries that we need to plug those holes with, right? Now, big X factor. We got to go back to pitching, right? Gary Cole is your horse. Rondon is your number two guy. That's going to be a huge factor of how he comes back from injury. I mean, this guy last year, 14 and 8, strikes up. He strikes up. He's a, he's a guy that gets a lot of strikeouts, right? 2.88 ERA. We got him a such a great freaking contract. We could get this guy, man, you know, 15 starts, man, at least for the second half of the season. I mean, he's, he's got to start throwing live. Uh, they throwing live batting practice now. It's like May. They're saying they want soon he'll be throwing, you know, rehab sessions in the minor leagues, which is all good things. I don't know. Honestly, they, they haven't even told those when he's eventually going to be up, called up, right? There's still a lot of question marks. But if he keeps up, if he comes back in and he's a shade of what he had last year with Garrett Cole, you look, you know, Nestor is going to give you Nestor innings, right? He's not as good as he was last year, but he's going to be out there and he's going to be one of those guys going to give you the innings. He's going to battle. 
Severino, you know, hit or miss right now, just like the rest of the. I mean, Domingo Herman, I'm actually very shocked, right? Another guy that's giving you four innings, four wins, four and four. So we know what our bullpen is going to give us. They've been our shining star. Um, but then when it comes to the offensive side, yeah, Judge needs to be healthy. Stanton needs to play, which, surprise, surprise, he barely played this year. Um, like you said, Volpe needs to improve and the rest of the guys. But there are some trades that we could make that definitely can give us that edge, right, to take us through the rest of the year because we're going to have these holes, right? We're going to have these other injuries that's going to happen. The, the 10-day DL shit comes up over and over again <laughs> throughout the season. And there's two guys I'm going to give you where I think the Yankees should uh, target because not only they may be available because of their contract and the salary cap, whatever the case may be, but we do have a hole in the outfield, right? You know, Aaron the Hicks, field. peace out. You know, uh, Mr. Uh, Isaiah uh, Kiner Falafa uh, experiment is, is, is failing horrible. Uh, that's not it. So you got guys like Randall Kritschuk. He's from uh, at, uh, Colorado Rockies, right? He's yeah, a guy like that, him, yeah, 316, you know, he, he missed the first month of the season, one home run, 14 RBIs. He's not getting a lot of plates, but this is a guy that can plug one of those holes in the outfield, can be a productive hitter for us, can get a lot of playing time. He's a veteran, contract friendly. He's one of the guys that they're probably going to part ways. There's not a lot available out there for, for a lot of teams to go after, and we need to focus on, on I think, more on that part. We need to kind of pluck that hole. Another guy that it, it looks like if, we, if if that team is heading the way that they're going and he's going to be available is uh, Jock Peterson. Jock Peterson from the Giants, you know, he he missed some time earlier this season, but 80, seven home runs, 24 RBIs. Look, this guy killed it when he was at the, at the World Series a couple of years ago with the, uh, you know, with the with the Dodgers. He's he's a he's preseason he's postseason proven. Uh, with the Giants, he was an all-star last year, 23 home runs. So these are guys that, you know, will help us kind of like maintain close with, you know, maintain close with uh, Baltimore and the Rays while we go through injuries and while we go through the long grind of the season. So we have holes in the outfield that these two guys can definitely plug in one of one or the other. And, um, and, and I think that's just where we go. I mean, it all depends on how good Rondon comes back. Pitching needs to get better. And yeah, we need the health factor back on again. And, and, to beat 39 and 29, echoing Gary's point there, we are pretty damn lucky to be at this point if you look at the lineup that's out there today. All right? It's good, no one. That's, yeah. you know, sometimes we're like, okay, we got all this money, we got all these players, we're struggling. But on like last year where everybody was booming and we were killing it, this year we've had a lot of more hurdles than we did last year. And, dude, we're you know, we're, we're in it. We're, you know, at one point, the race, like you said, I don't think starting pitching, their injuries, that's going to that's gonna take a toll. And Baltimore is Baltimore, you know? They're, and they're, Judge comes back, this lineup is completely different. Judge was on fire before he got injured. Boy, he he came back, back from that, it was on fire. And, and look at it, he gets hurt again. It's 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 going to be a complete 180. So Definitely. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing it. Gary, your thoughts? No, I mean, I can't, you know, again, even, you know, laid it all out there perfectly, you know, once everybody gets healthy, I'd love to see what this team's going to look like post All Star break because I think that's really where the test is going to begin for them. And you know, can Tampa keep this hot run going? Like I said, Baltimore, how much, how 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 long is this going to last? And you know, if even then, they don't need to win the division; they just need to get in. You look at Atlanta; Atlanta's the best example of that. Mm -hmm. Best recent example of that. All they need to do is get in. They went on the run. They went on. They ended up placing the trophy at the end of the year. So for really, like I said, the Yankees, the sky can be the limit, but there are going to be trades that are needed. And, you know, they just have to be smart because you can't, as much as we want to win now and we're star for a championship, <laughs> we can't sacrifice the farm system like other teams because there's just been – We've waited a really long time to have a good farm system. Let's keep it that way. We depleted the farm system when we pay for it, and now we're trying to we're, yeah. we're trying to get that get it back to what we need to. And I think it's a right combination of bringing your guys back up, sign them where they become free agents, and then just start doing moves that would make sense, right? Not only from a from a asset standpoint where you get to keep some players still, but also individuals like in the '90s, right? When we traded for somebody, man, it was a good role player that all of a sudden came in. And he plugged that hole that we needed to and give us that extra push, whether a pitcher, no whether it was an outfielder, was another catcher, whatever the case may be. But we never sacrificed our farm team. You know, we started doing that much later. 
No doubt, no doubt. Gentlemen, E-Man, thanks for coming back on, man. As per usual, would you like to give a shout out to what you do, your projects, your Twitter sphere, your show and all that? You have the floor, sir. Thank you, brother. Uh, thanks for having me. It's always a great time, uh, you know, chopping it up with you guys, man. It's always a really good time, and I appreciate the invite and love coming over to your show. Uh, again, the best way to find me is on Twitter, uh, Joe's underscore talk. Hit the the link tree in my bio where you're going to see where I'm available. I'm available pretty much on every platform. Uh, video wise, I do a live stream once a week, uh, kind of move it around. Uh, and I'm also kind of, you know, I'll, I'll throw some, um, you know, reaction episodes here and there. Check out my YouTube channel. I do a little more. I do a lot of shorts as well, just cool videos and stuff like that. And, and just, you know, segments of my show and, uh, you know, just trying to give out as much content the times allowed uh, through different various uh, avenues and ways to uh, keep, you know, viewers and uh, listeners uh, plugged in and entertained. So. All right. Awesome. No doubt. No doubt. Gary Legend, thanks for coming on. As we're saying, guys, we'll continue to be doing this series of probably every Wednesday moving forward where we will be doing a state of a city. Maybe next week we do state of Chicago. Who knows? But that's it for episode 91. Peace and love, everyone. Thank you, guys, and have a great day. Peace.